Hi there, I'm Rachel DeMille from tjed.org. People come to us all the time saying, I get the ideal of inspiring, but how do I actually inspire? Feels like I'm dragging rocks up a mountain. And if you <laughs> if you can, you know, inhabit that little metaphor there, it's 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 really a burdensome feeling when you're trying to drag people along in the name of inspiring them to learn, to try, to do, to explore. So I think people are right when they come to us and say, this is not right. Something just doesn't feel right. This 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 isn't inspire. So the question is. How do I inspire someone else? And the simple answer and the delightful answer is to inspire someone else, we need to feel inspired ourselves. You can't give what you don't have. And the reason this is a delightful answer is because it all of a sudden empowers you as the mentor, the parent, the mother, the father, the teacher, to do what delights you, to do what lights your fire, what brings a spring to your step, what, what gives you a sense of uh, purpose and, and inspiration. So to accomplish this, we like to recommend a, a, a short exercise. This is part of, of what can be uh, what we call a six month inventory or even a weekly blank page brainstorm. Simply this, get a piece of paper and a pen you could do it without these, but I, if you're going to take my advice on this, please get, do yourself a favor and record this. Capture your thoughts because it matters that you be able to review it and consider and cross things out and change things. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. Give yourself, you know, anywhere from five to, to 25 minutes. It's probably all it's going to take to do this. And I think most of us can accomplish that kind of time to take that time and Two pages. First page is this. At the top of the page, write, what do I hate to do? By this, I mean not, you know, I, I hate a paper cut with lemon juice in it. I mean something that's on your to-do list, something that you feel obligated to do or that somehow circumstances has you constantly doing. Something that's in your regular routine that you really hate doing. It might be managing the family laundry. It might be doing dishes. It might be last minute errands. It might be whatever. Working out. Whatever it is that's your thing that you really feel picked on or deflated by doing, write it down. Don't argue with yourself. Don't guilt yourself saying you, you have to do that. There's no way you can't do that. Just, just capture and validate you know what? This is something I do and I really don't like it. It makes me feel cruddy when I do this. So five of them. I think you can come up with five. If you come up with 25, that's okay. But really it's the top five that are going to be most meaningful to you right now. So five things on this list. What do I hate doing? So if you want to do that right now, go ahead and stop the video and then come back to me. Okay. You've got your five things that you hate to do. Now, turn the page, totally separate paper if you can, and we're going to do one more little brainstorm. And this one is, what are five things that I love to do? Now, this one is a lot broader, a lot wider open in the way we describe it. It doesn't have to be something that you do right now. In fact, more than likely, it's something that you're not doing right now because you're coming to this question of, I don't feel inspired. How am I supposed to inspire someone else? So the question then is, what do I love to do? A lot of times, especially if you're deep in the trenches of parenting or mothering, um, you'll find that it's hard to come up with something because you've abandoned a lot of the things that were very personal to you in, in order to deliver on what your family needs. That's okay. If you have to reach back, do that. Think about when you were a youth. Did you like horseback riding? Did you enjoy just, just doodling? Did you like um, going out in nature and just sitting peacefully? Did you like uh, the feeling of mud between your toes? If it's hard even at your youth, go back to when you were a child. Did you like sitting on your grandpa's lap? Just 
go and find those things that made you feel nurtured, that bring a spring to your step, a light to your eyes, give you a sense of purpose, like you're accomplishing something that's very personal to you. It doesn't, again, don't argue with yourself about this. Just capture it. Validate it. Say, huh, I do love that and write it down. If you can only come up with a couple right now, that's okay. A lot of moms are especially find themselves in a place where they're a little bit closed off to this because in order to avoid the, the anxiety or the, the sorrow of, of ignoring things that delight them, they sort of wall off their feelings to that thing. Let that process happen very naturally. Come up with one or two and it, it'll start to open up a little bit later. So now, I'll give you a second to do that. Go ahead and pause the video and come back to me when you're ready. Okay, you now have two lists. One is things that you hate to do, that you're currently doing, and one is things that you love to do that either you're not doing or you don't have in enough proportion in your, your everyday life that it really feeds your soul. Okay, now on that, let's take first the hate list. <laughs> Pick up your hate list and analyze it. Hopefully, and usually, you'll find things on there that aren't actually imperative. They might be things that you've taken on that you don't really have to do. If so, cross those things out. Just cross them off your list and kick them out. There are other things on that list that there might be a workaround. Say you hate doing dishes. It drives you crazy. Brainstorm, how can I change that situation? It might be that it's as simple as just, maybe you need a mixtape of your, your housework jams that you crank while you're doing the dishes. So you can you know grab the wooden spoon and sing into it while you're doing your stuff. That might fix it for you. Or it might be creating a schedule where you have other people do the dishes or where you do it as a whole family or novel. This is, this is where I am at right now, just for a season, because my, one of my sons just had a serious injury to his knee and he's laid up. And so I'm down one uh, helper and have a lot more responsibility in taking care of his needs. Anyway, so we're on a paper plate season right now. So maybe if you can work it into your budget, you just get paper products. That's okay. If that works for you, find ways to get rid of the stuff that kill your desire to love and lead. So now go ahead and pause the video and ponder on that five things that you hate and either cross things off or consider workarounds and write down your brainstorm on how to manage it differently. Pause and, and then come back to me when you're ready. It may be that you're already feeling a little burden lifting from your bosom. If you felt someone was kneeling on your chest and you couldn't quite get a deep breath, just validating that there are things in your life that you don't really like can be a really great way to go toward healing and saying, you know what? It's okay that I say I hate whatever. I don't enjoy that. It's not fun for me. I find it a drudgery. There's probably stuff on your hate list that you're not gonna find a way to get rid of. And that's okay too, especially if you brainstorm ways to either make a workaround or manage it differently, or maybe even create a reward for yourself, just an acknowledgement, hey, you know what? I did that hard thing, and so now I'm gonna buy myself a scented candle. They make them cheap at Walmart, you can just get a pretty little scent of, you know, I don't know if you like blueberries or, or sea, sea scents, just something that says to you, you know what, kudos. Acknowledgement. You did that hard thing and you get to reward yourself with something simple. So there's your list of five. Hopefully now you're feeling just a little bit um, relieved of some burdens that have been keeping your inspiration quotient depressed. Now let's take out your other list, your love to list. We're going to do the same thing with this one. Consider those things on that list, even if you only came up with one or two of them. And now that you're kicking out some stuff from your hate list or turning them into not so much hate list, look at that love list and say, how can I fit one or two of these things into my life now? And give yourself permission to incorporate 
one or two or more of those things into your life now. Now this is the part where often we find ourselves arguing with ourselves. I can't do that because I have to put so-and-so first or I have to put this first. You have to put all these other things first. Let me take you back to that metaphor, that, that symbol that we talked about earlier of you dragging rocks up a mountain. This is you doing your duty. This is you sacrificing self in order to bring the others along. But look at that. Look at it carefully. They're confined in a bag and completely under your control. What if instead they were on the path with you, each had their own little personalized walking stick with a leather te tether that had cool beads, maybe carvings, maybe put some leather strips around for a hand grip. They're running up ahead on, on the trail with you. They're, they're off here and there asking you questions or showing you things. Isn't that a really different view? Much better than dragging the rocks. What if by incorporating these things that you love into your life, you unleashed the potential of that second vision of climbing that mountain. I'm here to tell you that's the way it works for me. And that's the way it works for a lot of other people I know. And isn't it worth the effort to bring something that you love back into your life? Because I promise you, when you have a light in your eye, when you are self-educating, when you are working on self-improvement, when you are dedicating time to things that expand your gifts and allow you to offer something beautiful to the world, whatever it may be, that model, that value system sets a tone for your home so that your children value differently the ideals of self-education, of service, of improving oneself in order to offer something beautiful to the world. And then you have the kids in walking sticks racing on ahead on the path. I have those kids. I know hundreds, probably thousands of families who have those kids. And it's very, very difficult for a child to race ahead on the path and go around finding interesting things and questions to ask when the primary caregiver is depressed duty-driven and manages everyone else to the neglect of self. If that is what we model as what it means to be a responsible adult, is it any wonder that our children are not really interested in becoming responsible adults? But if we model for them, I have inner light. I have a sense of purpose. There are things that I love. There are things that I have to give. That's what they start to ask about themselves. What do I love? What do I have to give? What's my inner light? What, what is my purpose? And those are the kinds of questions that when they follow them toward their answers, they inspire the child, the youth, the young adult to exceed themselves, to overcome deficits, to do hard things, to refine their special talents and genius. This is the power of inspiration. It's not without rigor. It's just measured for the appropriate type of rigor on each level of development. That's our minute for today. Come visit us at tjed.org for more ideas on how to help you and your family on the path of leadership education. tjed.org, an education to match your mission.